The Higher Life, the era of the word revolution, with Apostle Dr. David Kunobua and Pastor Rita Bella. God Almighty, the strong and blessed one, great Jehovah, I am, I am. And it is our custom and rivers of life wherever you are to remain standing to our feet for the reading of the Word of God. The Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter number 24. And when you have it, say amen. The Bible says, Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulchre, bringing the spices which they had prepared, and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre. And they entered in and found out the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed, they are, be uh, they are about behold two men stood by them in shining garments and they, they were very afraid and bowed down their faces unto the earth. And they said unto them, why seek ye the living among the dead? Verse number six, he is not here, but is reason. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee. Verse number seven saying, the son of man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words and returned from the sepulchre and told all these things unto the eleven and unto all the rest. Verse number ten, it was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary the mother of James and the other women that were with, with, uh, with them which told these tidings unto the apostles. Verse number 11, everybody. And their words seemed to them as idle tales, and they believed them not. And their words seemed unto them as idle tales, and they believed them not. Let me read it again. And their words seemed unto them as idle tales, and they believed them not. Verse number 12, then arose Peter and ran unto the sepulchre and stooping down, he beheld the linen clothes laid by themselves and departed, wondering in himself at that which was come to pass. Somebody shout amen. One more read into the gospel according to St. John chapter number 20. John chapter number 20, verse number Nine. John 20, verse number 9. For as yet they knew not the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. Everybody read it again. For as yet they knew not the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. Somebody shout amen. As you and I understand, we are still in the resurrection season. This is why I felt compelled to continue speaking from the same message of the cross of Jesus and the crucifixion and the resurrection. And today my topic will be the power of the resurrection. Somebody say the power of the resurrection. I can hear you one more time, everybody. The power of the resurrection. Father, Son, and Spirit, we give you praise, glory, and honor. We ascribe unto you all the majesty. All glory belongeth unto you, for nobody is like unto thee, and nobody can do me like Jesus can. We invite your presence, your power, your anointing, your grace, and your fragrance to be revealed in this place, even in the lives of we, your people. Be our tutor, our counselor, our rabbi to guide us into all truth. My God, speak 
your words into the bottoms of our hearts that we shall be recipients of the realm of word that you are releasing unto this great body of believers. My God, as your servant, I decree that you may increase and that you may have full preeminence in this place. Have your way, O Spirit of the living God. We give you praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Somebody shout amen. amen. And you may take your seats in the presence of the living God. If you reckon out of scripture to understand the writings that you and I have just heard about, these were written by some of the apostles of Jesus. They had been followers or they had been disciples of Jesus. The Bible says a disciple is a follower or a follower is a disciple if you will. And he had 70 disciples to begin off with. And the Bible says it came to a point in time after a while that he selected 12 out of the 70 that he had. If you will remember in Luke chapter 6 verse number 12, the Bible says it came to pass that he went out into the mountain to pray all by himself and he continued all night in prayer before God. And the Bible says when it was day, he called unto himself his disciples out of whom he chose 12 and he named them apostles and then the bible goes on to list down their names peter being one of them uh, john and james the sons of zebedee being uh the other disciples in judas and there was another judas as well andrew bartholomew and several other disciples to make a total of 12 the bible says he named them apostles if you will can somebody say amen but i love what these writers go on to describe especially in the four synoptic or synoptic gospels if you will these gospels being matthew mark Luke and John, they've been very diligent to describe what happens in the days of Jesus. And uh, John goes in details to speak about that uh, even if uh, a, a man were to write the works of Jesus, this entire world would not be big enough to contain the books that will be written thereof about your Jesus day. That means what we see written in the four Gospels is nothing compared to what he did. He did a whole lot more works which are not even recorded. The writer goes on to say that I suppose if books were to be written, even the whole world would not contain the works of Jesus. The writer of the Acts of the Apostles simply writes the Acts of the Apostles. But uh, these other men wrote the acts of Jesus Christ and the ministry of Jesus Christ. They spoke about his genealogy, spoke about the bathing of Jesus, and spoke about him being a child and him being born of a virgin woman called Mary, and him being uh, raised up in the house of uh, Joseph and Mary, and he grew in wisdom and stature, and the favor of God was upon him. And the Bible says at age number 12, how he went into the temple and began to seek from the doctors of the law. And the Bible says he was about his father's business when the father and the mother sold him for three long days and they couldn't find him and we see Jesus disappearing off the scene of scripture and manifesting a long while later when he was age number 30 that means from 12 to 30 a space of about 18 years nothing is recorded in the life of Jesus Christ our Lord but Luke is very diligent to write what happens. And if you will understand, Luke is a physician by profession. A physician, a medical doctor by profession. He was not a disciple of Jesus, but he was a disciple of the disciples of Jesus. I don't know if the church perceived that, but let me say it again if you didn't. Luke did not have a physical face-to-face -face encounter with Jesus. Luke was a disciple of the disciples of Jesus, as the Bible says, go ye into all the world and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And Lord, I am with you unto the very ends of the world. One of the disciples they made or they baptized in the uh, message of the gospel happens to be Luke. And I don't know if the church knew that, that Luke was not a disciple of Jesus, but he was fully trained under the auspices of other 
disciples, if you will. Uh, Luke chapter 1, verse number 1 through verse number 3 happens to speak about the details of where Luke arises from to write the uh, gospel according to St. Luke. And it says that, uh, for as much as many have taken in hand to set forth uh, in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us, even as they deliver them unto us, which from the beginning were right witnesses and ministers of the Lord. The Bible says in verse number 2, Luke 1, 2, that even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. The Bible says in verse number 3, it seemed good to me also having had perfect understanding of all those things from the very first to write unto you all in order most excellent Theophilus. He says that uh, he did not walk with Jesus but this message was delivered unto him by they which were eyewitnesses. Are you still with me? If you are say amen. They which were eyewitnesses, Peter, James, John, Bartholomew, Andrew, and the other apostles trained several other men of God. And I reckon that in the upper room on the day of Pentecost, where we had 120 believers gathered together and they were uh, praying, the Bible speaketh how the Holy Spirit came down on the day of Pentecost. Luke happened to be one of the 120 believers that were baptized with the Spirit of God Almighty. A long while later on as they advanced in ministry many many years that's when he sat down and began to write the gospel according to St. Luke what Peter, James, John and the other apostles delivered unto Luke now he takes and writes them forward and extends them to a group of people that in his writing he defines as most excellent Theophilus. I've gone on time and on to describe who most excellent Theophilus is and if you will understand the word theo means or the word theo means God or for example theology the study of God Christology the study of Christ and pneumatology the study of the Holy Spirit so he goes on to say theophilus and if you will understand the suffix philus means love hallelujah how there's agape love there's filial love that's where philus comes from the your philus hallelujah that most excellent Theophilus, most excellent lovers of God. So he is writing unto them to instruct them in the way that they should go. And he goes on to write in details about Jesus Christ and about the ministry and about, he speaks about Zechariah's the priest and uh, no other gospel talks about Zechariah's, the priest and the bathing of John. It was Luke that sat down, having received perfect understanding from they that were eyewitnesses and he began to write down the mysteries of the bathing of Jesus and uh, the forerunner being called John the Baptist and uh, how John was raised and uh, Luke chapter 1 verse number 8 and the Bible says he was in the desert all the days of his life until the day of his manifestation in Israel. Hallelujah. That even John when he was born his mother raised him until two years of age and he vanished out of sight. He was driven into the wilderness by the spirit of God and there he was and he ate locusts and wild honey and and he had a leathern guard around about his waist and became a proclaiming in the wilderness of uh, the Jordan and uh, saying the voice of one crying in the wilderness prepare ye the way of the Lord. At that time Jesus also cometh to the baptism of John and to be baptized by John and he is immersed in water and the Bible says while he prayed, excuse me, that while he prayed and he being baptized the heavens were opened and the spirit of God descended upon upon Jesus in a bodily shape hallelujah and spoke clearly and said the father saying this is my beloved son in whom I am well please listen ye unto him from that day, Jesus being about 30 years of age, was driven into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil 40 days and 40 nights. And I see him coming out and look for 14 says, uh, uh, then Jesus Christ returned in the power of the spirit. Hallelujah. And he went into Galilee and news of him went spreading God through all the regions around about. He returned in the power of the spirit. He was led by the spirit and he returned in the power 
of the spirit let me say it again he was led by the spirit into the wilderness when god leads you he shall make sure by the time you come out you shall come out stronger than you went in you shall come out more powerful than you went in you shall return in the power and in the spirit of the living god because god led you there and i reckon there are people going through diverse trials and tribulations and uh, hellish situations and i perceive god has led you into the wilderness of temptation and the wilderness to be uh, a race to another level and by the time you come out you will be a whole lot stronger than how you went in somebody shout amen, amen. ladies and gentlemen Luke has gone in details to write what happens in the scriptures and he speaks about the miracles of the Lord and he speaks about the works of Jesus and he cometh to the summation or the conclusion of his gospel according to St. Luke. That means the gospel that I look a beloved physician in as much as I was a medical doctor by profession yet I took time out of my profession to set it aside to the work of God. I believe that message went to somebody who is so busy in your profession and you can't find time for God or time to study the word of God uh, yeah, you open your Bible only on a Sunday morning when we come into the house of God. Luke was a physician by profession, a medical doctor, if you will. But it took time to write down and he became a scribe. Scribes were the writers of the Gospels and he became a scribe to write down the Gospel of Luke. Hallelujah. And we become students and scholars of the Word because of what Luke wrote down. And I love the, uh, the Gospel according to St. Luke. There were things Luke writes about that John never writes about and Matthew and Mark never write about as well. But Luke went on to write about them. For example in Luke 24 we see uh, how the two disciples, one of them being a Cleopas and uh, going to uh, uh, the road to Emmaus and the Bible says Jesus joined into their conversation as they were talking about Jesus, hallelujah, and the things which happened in the time and hallelujah. And the Bible says as the master began to join in the conversation conversation he opened unto them the scriptures and the eyes and uh, they began to perceive and to hear mysteries and from Moses he began to delineate the word of God all the way to the prison day. John never writes about this. Mark and Matthew never write about this. Luke writes about them. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And there are people whom God is going to empower in this generation that you shall write a number of books and you shall release music albums and uh, uh, gospel songs recorded from the gates of heaven uh, dropped down into your bosom which we shall send to several other nations and revelations which nobody has preached about before. And uh, you shall be the very, the very first one to write about them. Somebody shout, I am one of the ones. I can't hear you. Somebody shout, I am one of the ones. Luke has written the book of St. Luke and uh, he goes on. He is also the writer of the book of the Acts of the Apostle. Why am I speaking about this? I'm not losing you and I'm not losing myself. I'm giving you an introduction so you and I can understand where we are going. Luke also writes the book of the Acts of the Apostles and uh, if you will, the Acts of the Apostles. Chapter number 1, verse number 1 through verse number 3. He says the former account or the former treatise have I made all the Euphilus again to the same people, but now it says the former treatise or the former account or the former book which I wrote referring unto the gospel according to St. Luke. The former treatise have I made all the Euphilus of all that Jesus began both to do and teach until the day in which was taken up into heaven. After that, he through the Holy Ghost had given commands unto the disciples or unto the apostles whom he had chosen. Hallelujah. And the Bible says uh, to whom he showed himself alive by many infallible proofs, convincing demonstrations and undenying evidences that he was once dead but now is alive forevermore. And the Bible says in Acts chapter 1 verse number 3 that he showed himself alive by infallible proofs, being seen of them for 40 days 
days, 40 long days, he was talking about the resurrection message. This is why I said the resurrection is not a one-time experience that you and I celebrate Resurrection Sunday on what other people call Easter. Hallelujah. This was an entire season, 40 long days, amen, if you will. And the Bible says for 40 long days, he appeared unto them, appearing to the 500 all at once. And he appeared unto the 11 all at once. And he appeared unto the two disciples on the road to Emmaus. And he appeared unto several other people. Hallelujah. He appeared unto Mary Magdalene. She was the very first one who saw Jesus after the resurrection. My God. Something about Mary Magdalene. She was the same very woman who anointed the feet of Jesus with a fragrant oil. And she wiped the oil with her hair. And the disciples tried to rebuke her saying, why this waste? And the Lord said, no. She preserved this for the day of my burial. Let her alone. There was something about Mary. Oh God, it was a son Mary out of whom the Lord cast out seven demons. Sometimes people come to the house of God and you ridicule them because they are bound and they are ostracized and they got issues. But she was the one with the anointing that nobody had. Oh, yeah. Somebody shout hallelujah. She had a history, but she was the one with the anointing. And uh, some theologians have gone on to say she was the same very woman who was caught in the sin of adultery with another man. And uh, they brought her unto Jesus, wanting to stone her. But the Lord spared her life. My God. Because the Lord saw beyond the sin, there was a ministry in her. Beyond your errors and beyond your faults, there was something powerful in you. Can somebody shout amen? Beyond your history and beyond your past and beyond what you have done and how you did it and how and how and where you did it from, there is something powerful in you. There is a powerful man of God in you and a powerful woman of God in you. She came bound and she came rejected and she came ostracized and uh, she came with issues. Hallelujah. Number one, the thing Jesus did was to first cast uh, seven demons out of her. My God, this woman was really bound. But the Lord so beyond uh, the mystery of uh, de demon possession, there is a ministry in Mary. Never cast away people who are bound and people who have issues. Uh, some of them may be your employers tomorrow. Some of them may be carrying the anointing for your next journey in the next week. Some of them may be the financiers of your ministry. If you could learn to minister unto them, hallelujah, you would then extract the goodness out of them. This is why the devil also focuses on, uh, on, uh, on, uh, on uh, tormenting people because he knows there is greatness hidden up on the inside of their lives. And uh, if you are going through hell and afflictions and trials and tribulations, I gather there is something powerful in you. Uh, tell somebody there is something great in you. Come on, I can't hear you. Tell somebody, neighbor, there is something great in you. After the resurrection, Jesus appears unto Mary. First of all, before Peter, before James, and before anybody else. And uh, remember how she could not even recognize Jesus. And uh, she thought he was a gardener. And uh, she said, where have you hid my Lord? And uh, uh, Jesus called her by name. And she recognized it was the Lord. And the Lord said unto her, Mary, don't you touch me yet. Because I've not yet ascended unto my father. I've not yet given him a report of what? I have done in hell. Let me first go give an account of how I've destroyed hell and death. And then I shall come back and then you can touch me. Oh, you didn't get what I said. Somebody shout hallelujah. My God, Jesus Christ, I love what the Lord did. And when he descended down into the lower parts of the world, in Ephesians 4, the Bible says, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men for some to be apostles and some to be prophets and some to be evangelists and some to be pastors and teachers for the equipping of the body of Christ. And this he ascended on high. What is it? But that he first descended into the lower parts of the earth and then he ascended far above of all principalities. Uh, this is why the Bible says uh, all powers uh, and all deep diabolical principalities are under his feet because he ascended far above all principalities and all powers and he disarmed them all, making a public spectacle of them all. Somebody shout hallelujah. 
the other day we say because he, he disarmed principalities. The devil who's been fighting you was already disarmed a long time ago. That nonsensical witch was been bewitching you was already disarmed a long time ago. If you could realize who you are and rise up and say enough, the, enough is enough. Roll up your sleeves and say devil this means war. You can't afflict me anymore. You can't take down my family anymore. You can't take all my money anymore. You can't destroy my finances anymore. Rise up because this is war. Somebody shout hallelujah. Look, the writer says Jesus appeared to the apostles whom he showed himself alive uh, for 40 long days. For 40 long days we're celebrating the season of the resurrection. Jesus was crucified on the day of the Passover which Moses instructed unto the Israelites that I do this always in remembrance and uh, 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 from generation to generation recited in the ears of the children of Israel. Anna, the, uh, the day of the Passover because in that day the Lord delivered you from the house of bondage and the house of captivity. Also the Lord said do this in remembrance of me. He was talking about because on that day that he died he also said it is done and it is finished. Every time we do this in remembrance of him we remind the devil that he has been overcome and he has been defeated. Uh, yeah that sickness and disease have been overcome. That divorce and celibacy have been overcome. That failure and stagnancy have been overcome. The poverty and infirmities are being overcome. Somebody shout amen. amen. Ladies and gentlemen, the Passover was done for example how Jesus died on the day of the Passover. And then Pentecost was celebrated as a feast for seven long days. And uh, the fullness of the day of Pentecost happened 50 days after the Passover. Somebody said 50 days. That's where you get the word pent, pentatoch, pentecost. Pent means five. Pentagon, a shop with five sides. Thank you very much. Hallelujah. So now, uh, um, the past, excuse me, pentecost was celebrated 50 days after the Passover. And if Jesus died on the Passover day, if you will, hallelujah. How many days was he in the grave? He was in the grave for three days and three nights. And uh, according to uh, the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, verse number 3, how many days did he show himself unto the apostles? 40 long days. So three plus 40. How many days do you have? 43. Now you have seven days before the fullness of the day of Pentecost. And then the apostles went into the upper room and the Bible says they prayed and suddenly when they were together in that upper room, the Holy Ghost came down on the fullness of the day of Pentecost. Remember in Jerusalem, every nation had come. Africans and Europeans and Americans were all gathered in Jerusalem celebrating a seven day feast called the Feast of Pentecost. And the Bible says when the day of Pentecost was fully come. That means on the last day. That means on the seventh day. That means 50 days after the Passover. 50 days after Jesus died. That means seven days after the apostles went into the upper room. Seven days they prayed. And in seven days they were able to download the glory of the living God. In seven days they were able to bring down the promise of the Father. In seven days there came a sound from heaven as of a mighty rushing wind. In seven days uh, they were filled with power in seven days uh, my God, in seven days the church was rebuilt again in seven days somebody shout seven days somebody shout seven days if in seven days I can bring about such a revival that you and I are still standing in, how much more can we do when we do a, a 21 days of prayer? Lord my God, we can do a whole lot more. In seven days they were serious and uh, they brought down the Holy Ghost. In 21 days we can do a whole lot more. If you and I could just get a whole lot more serious than they were, you will be surprised at what God can do. You will be surprised at what God can do. God can move in all of the America, and God can make your name known all over their whole land. In seven days, the Holy Ghost come down. When we seek God again, something powerful shall happen in our lives. Somebody shout hallelujah. 
I had to give you scriptural truth and scriptural context for you to understand where we're coming from. That now the, 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 the Passover or the resurrection is done for 40 long days. And if you will, remember, you may, you're welcome to search on your calendars or on your Apple calendars or your Google calendars and find out when the day of Pentecost is. You'll be surprised. It is falling exactly 50 days after Resurrection Sunday, after last Sunday. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we are in a season of the resurrection. And in the season of the resurrection, many miracles happened. The dead who are buried in the grave. The Bible says the graves were opened and loved ones came walking and knocking on their doors. Ah, what a message. The message of the resurrection. Everything that was dead. Finances that were dead. Churches that were dead. Businesses that were dead. Sons and daughters that were dead. People that had lost hope. Everything came back to life. Somebody shout, this is my resurrection season. Come and slap somebody. Tell them, neighbor, this is your season of the resurrection. And everything you've lost is coming back to your life. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout restoration. Come on, somebody shout restoration. I can't hear you. One more time, somebody shout restoration. Jesus has been speaking about the message of the resurrection. There is a reason why he does not go to sit on the right hand of God the Father immediately but he waits for 40 long days presenting himself remember the other day we read from the gospel according to saint matthew i believe it was a uh, chapter number was it 20 or chapter number 28 how we saw and uh, the pharisees and the scribes they say that deceiver that liar and they and they paid this a large amount of money to the god saying go tell everybody he has not resurrected Jesus made sure, let me not go to heaven to prove this a lie. There are things God is going to disappoint and going to disapprove in Jesus' name. God is about to disapprove witchcraft. God is about to disapprove celibacy and uh, uh, poverty and uh, wretchedness and misery. God is about to defy them all in the name of Jesus. For 40 days he said, I'm not going to go to heaven. Let me stay here and prove to the priest as well that I am alive. Somebody shout hallelujah. My God, and for 40 days, the Son of God walked in Jerusalem. For 40 days, the angels in heaven are waiting uh, for the Son of God. For 40 days, thrones are being set together. But for 40 days, it's also like, you know what? I can't go and leave a mess up in here. I can't go when there is a rumor ar ar around, going around about me that I never resurrected. God is going to silence every rumor and every lie about your name. God is going to silence every rumor and every lie about your church and about your ministry. May God silence every lie about your life. I mean people can fabricate lies about you and fabricate deceptions about your destiny. But God has come to defy every lie, every rumor, every logamba, every gossip in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. See that's what I like about the resurrection. The resurrection will prove to the devil that you got no power. That you've been overcome. That you're being defeated. I mean, if he had just resurrected and nobody saw him and just went to heaven, sat on the right end of the Father, we would never have had all these revelations and all these infallible proofs the Bible talks about. But God will make sure there are infallible proofs and convincing demonstrations and undeniable evidences. When God brings you out, he shall make sure even the liars and the witches who bewitched you will see you coming back up. Oh, shadow, shabaka, tobacco, saya. When God revives a church, he will make sure those who are wishing for your downfall will be the ones to witness you rising up. Oh, yes. When God restores your marriage, he shall make sure the ones who are bewitching you to leave your husband will be the ones to witness your marriage and your wedding day. Make sure you invite them on your way. Send them an invitation card. Send them an invitation. Send the liars and the witches an invitation card and tell them, I invite you personally to witness my wedding. 
Somebody shout amen. amen. See, I, I hate doing things in the dark. I love, I love to be seen, amen. Yeah, so to prove the power of God and to prove to somebody that, that the devil has lost the battle. Why do a wedding in a secret place? Oh God, why do a wedding in the secret place? Call everybody, take the wedding to a mega hotel. Call the witches, call the sorcerers, call the liars, call everybody. Invite them to your wedding. Send them an invitation card with your very own handwriting, written, and you write their names. Ah, uh, and uh, you write, yeah, David, I invite you to my wedding. Somebody shout hallelujah. I double dare you to invite your enemies to your wedding. Yes. So they shall be the one to take the word out there that you know what? We failed. That our source we failed. Our witchcraft failed. We did everything but we failed. She has a bigger God. She has a greater God. She has a mightier God. She has a stronger God. This is why Jesus stayed, hallelujah, to prove to every lie, to every liar, to every high priest that in as much as you crucified me, yet I am alive again. There are people who have been assigned to crucify your destiny, to crucify your finances, to crucify your home, to crucify your marriage. But when you come out, make sure you're the witnesses to what God has done in your life. And you say, Look what the Lord has done. Mukama to Kubalina Molinia Yasu. We shall celebrate your wedding before the eyes of everybody. If I be a man of God of whom I am, we shall celebrate your wedding in Jesus' name. Make sure you invite the witch. I said the Shotoko Shaka. And the problem is when you invite them, they don't want to come. Because they will be disappointed. Hallelujah. Because they will be shocked that she escaped right in our very own eyes. So what can we do? Honey, there's nothing you can do anymore. God delivered me. God set me free. God set them free. God has empowered them. Somebody shout amen. Hmm. Jesus, the Son of God, he's come back from the grave. Somebody say he's come back from the grave. And so will you. Oh, yeah, and so will I. And so will I. If the grave could not contain him, uh, yeah, death cannot contain you anymore. He broke the sting of death and he overcame the victory of the grave and is sitting on the right hand of the majesty on high. For three days he was wrestling with every devil, with every root worker, with every warlock and every wizard in hell. For three days he was wrestling with the devil himself and he came back with the keys to life and death. And right now he's sitting in uh, the glory of God on the majesty on high because the son of God has overcome. Somebody shout I am an overcomer. That's why the Bible says be of good cheer for I have overcome the world and because I have overcome you will overcome as well. Your family shall overcome. Your home will overcome. Your children will overcome. Your spouse will overcome. I mean the devil may demonstrate a little but you will overcome. There may be a delay but you shall overcome. There may be some sort of denials but you will overcome. In Jesus' mighty name. I say it in Jesus' mighty name. Upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, these women have come to the sepulchre to anoint the body of Jesus. Again, it is this Mary. I thought she broke the flask and she ran out of oil. But it's amazing she still has a whole lot more oil. Oh, God. Oh, God. I thought she broke the flask and uh, the whole house was filled with the aroma and the fragrance. And they said, why this waste? There's nothing you saw in God that God shall never return back unto your good measure. Press down, shaken together and running over. Everything you give to God, whether your money or your time, God shall make sure he multiplies it and you shall never run out. Mary again is the very first woman to come to the tomb with more anointing oil. 
that the disciples never had. Where was she getting this oil? Because she had a secret. The secret was sowing in Jesus. When you sow in God, give him your time. Give him your money. Give him your days. God will make sure everything you sow in him. Galatians 6, 7. For God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he reap as well. If you sow greatness, you shall reap greatness. If you sow money, you shall reap money. If you sow love, you shall reap love. If you sow wealth, you shall reap wealth. Somebody shout amen. I prophesy to people in here. You're going to see exponential wealth breaking forth in your life before the end of this year. I said, you're going to see exponential wealth getting loosed in your life. The gates of heaven are going to open to your life. Before the end of this year, some of you will testify about the millionaire anointing. If you didn't receive it, don't you come to me when I get it. If you didn't receive it, don't you come to me when I give my testimony. See, some people want to connect to you because they see God has blessed you. But when you're carrying your cross, everybody runs away. Oh, God. Hallelujah. When you're carrying your cross, it's amazing how when God smites a shepherd, all the sheep shall scatter. Everybody talks about you. Then all your friends, they walk away from you. I mean, you look at your phone and nobody can call you. Oh, the Lord bless you. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Anybody ever been through a hell and everybody has walked away from you, turned their back on you, and you thought I had friends in my life, but nobody calls you. I mean, you spend a whole week and your phone does not ring at all. Hallelujah. I love what David did. The Bible says, and David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Sometimes all you have to do, encourage yourself in the Lord your God, because sometimes you're so lonely in that house by yourself and uh, you're looking at the walls and the walls are looking at you and uh, you prayed every kind of prayer. You fasted every kind of fasting and there's been no breakthrough. The Bible says, and David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Sometimes we've got to make yourself the audience and uh, you're the preacher as well. Or the, sometimes you're the pews as well. And you decree in the mirror, yeah, I shall make it. I will live and not die. But I shall live to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. Hallelujah. Pick up your other cell phone and call yourself on the landline and answer it on the other side and, uh, and say hello honey and say here I am honey hallelujah and tell yourself I am blessed uh, and uh, highly favored tell yourself God has not forgotten about you uh, who am I preaching to in this place uh, somebody shout hallelujah I'm not crazy. I've not lost my mind. I'm simply encouraging myself. Uh, call me crazy. Call me everything. Uh, but I'm encouraging myself. Hallelujah. When you are encouraging yourself, uh, you will look like a fanatic. Some people will despise what you're doing. Uh, but after God has blessed you, uh, they will come and say, we prayed for you. Uh, we stood there with you. Uh, we encouraged you. Honey, where were you when I was encouraging myself? I mean, I called you to give me $200, only $200. And you declined my call the devil is a liar hallelujah whoever turns you away may God bring them back to you on their knees in the mighty name of Jesus somebody shout hallelujah somebody shout hallelujah somebody shout hallelujah Mary has gone again to the sepulcher to anoint the body of Jesus and she's still carrying a fragrant oil and the Bible says they had spices and they had oil, they had ointment and uh, this was a, the kind of oil that you put upon somebody and it, pres it preserves their body from decaying and she was something, Mary was really something, she had all kinds of oil, where did she get the fragrant oil, where did she get this kind of preservative that you put upon her body and the body would not decay. And the Bible says let her alone for she preserved this for the day of my burial that when I go to the grave and they roll the stone away, there shall be no stench like in the days of Lazarus but when there shall be a fragrance of the anointing of Mary. Oh God. Hallelujah. And when the angel rolled the stone away, there was a fragrance coming out. It was the anointing of Mary. 
He was the anointing on Mary. Hallelujah. Uh, some of you, when God rolls the stone away, there shall be a fragrance oil coming out because the fragrance oil of prayer, of fasting, prayer will preserve you that even though you're in the grave, if you continue to pray, the grave of depression, you shall not decay. You shall come back stronger and more powerful. You shall come back with the anointing of God dripping along your face. And uh, people shall be mesmerized how you never died and you never decayed in the middle of your situation. They thought you would lose your mind, but you didn't lose your mind. Why? Because the anointing oil of prayer preserved you. The anointing oil of fasting preserved you. The anointing oil, you broke the flask of prayer. You anoint your just separate prayer and you come out stronger and more powerful. Somebody shout, I'm coming out. Yeah, you're coming out. In the name of Jesus. And the Bible says they found the stone rolled away and the body of Jesus was not there. The angel said unto them, why seek ye the living among the dead? For he is not here. Hallelujah. But he is risen and is going before you into Galilee. Remember how he spoke unto you while he was yet alive. And uh, Mary brought this word back unto all the apostles. It was Mary who proclaimed the resurrection to the apostles. It was Mary whom they labeled a sinful woman that proclaimed the resurrection. Let me pass for a minute. Let me pass for a minute. God did not use the apostles to proclaim the resurrection. God used a so-called sinful woman. The adulterer. Hallelujah. Who had issues who was a demoniac, to go and preach to the apostles about the resurrection. And she came and preached to the apostles, like I'm preaching to you right now, about the power of the resurrection. Mary went into that room where they were standing, and she said, give me a microphone. Shako toko shabaka. My God. You're going to be surprised how God is going to raise you up to preach to powerful men and women of God. Hallelujah. God is going to raise up the, the Puerto Ricans and uh, the Africans and the Asians to come to America and preach unto the Americans uh, the message of Jesus Christ. I mean, you have an accent, but God will use you. You have a history, but God will use you. You got a background, but God will use you. Ah, somebody shout, I am one of the ones. Yeah, you are one of the ones and uh, God is going to use you. God used Mary to preach the message of the resurrection. And the 11 were, the angel said, go tell the 11. Go tell the 11. Ha, 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 ha. Lord have mercy. It's amazing how God can skip the preachers and he goes into the pews and he tells somebody in the pews, go tell the preachers, I'm coming. I'm going to meet you in Galilee. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. Go tell the doctors of the world. Go tell the apostles that I am alive. Amen. And you've seen me. I mean, he appears to Mary. Before he appears to, J to James and John and Peter and all the other apostles. What did Mary have? Anointing. The fragrance oil. The anointing of God. My God, Mary had something that would attract the presence of God. Was this some Mary, the mother of, uh, excuse me, the sister of Martha and Lazarus, who sat down at the feet of Jesus while Martha was in the kitchen department, getting herself busy. And she, became, she came whining unto Jesus, Lord, my sister is sitting by and I'm busy in the kitchen. And the Lord told her, Martha, you're so concerned with many things that don't matter anymore. But Mary has chosen that great part, which is to sit down at my feet and hearken unto my word. I mean, there are people while I'm preaching, they're in the kitchen. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, they got a mother spirit. Let, let me rebuke this devil so he can get out of the church. Amen. Oh, yeah, don't, re come on, don't rebuke the preacher. Oh, uh, yeah, let the preacher rebuke you. There is a reason I got the microphone and you don't have the microphone. So let me do my job while I have it. Amen. Somebody shout amen. amen. The mother spirit is too very prevalent in the church to 
to this present day. The mother spirit is the one that notice as a preacher is on the pulpit and it will make itself busy. Verse are sitting uh, in the word of God and they shall say, you know what? Because there's a lot of other affairs to be. There's time for everything. There's time for everything. There's time to live and a time to die. There's a time to laugh and a time to mourn. There's a time to sow and a time to pluck what has been planted. There's a time to do everything. If it is time for the word, sit in the congregation. Listen to the word. And Mary has chosen that good part and it shall not be taken away from her. And when she anointed Jesus, listen to what the Lord says, wherever this gospel shall be preached, what this woman has done shall be spoken in remembrance of her. I mean, I can talk about anybody else. I can talk about, I, I may not talk about anybody else as long as I talk about Mary. It is recorded. It is recorded. Wherever this gospel shall be preached, what this woman has done shall be spoken in remembrance of her. Lord have mercy. Something about Mary. Let the Mary spirit come back into the church. The spirit of humility. The spirit to sit down at the word. You just want to listen to the revelation falling out of the man of God's mouth. Hallelujah. You're always there for service. You've given your all to the work of God. This was the kind of woman who Mary was. Slap every mother. Tell him get out of, get out of your mother spirit. I said, slap every mother, cast that devil out of her. Cast, cast that mother spirit out of her. That mother spirit. We drive it out of you in the name of Jesus. That mother spirit. Hallelujah. Mother, mother, malita. <laughs> mother. That mother spirit. Huh? Can somebody shout amen? amen? Listen, everybody. The Bible says, Luke 24, verse number 11, and their words seemed unto them as idol tells and they believed them not. Let me, let, because we're talking about the power of the resurrection, and because of time, I'm going to go through this very quickly. Somebody say amen. amen. In Jesus' name. When the Bible says their words seemed unto them as idol tells them, they believe them not. Number one, listen. They, they, they look at a woman. Because in those days, a woman was despised in society. And it was even recorded. A woman should not be a public speaker. You cannot preach in public. You can't talk in public. But there is a reason God was able to break protocol. This was the very day God broke protocol. And he anointed women to go be the preachers. And God is going to raise women preachers to go everywhere. Whether you're African or American, God is going to raise women preachers. Hallelujah. To go everywhere. Women with boldness. Women with power. Women who can prophesy. Women who got the anointing. Women who can cast out devils. Women who are fast spitting. Women who got the anointing. Hallelujah. The power of an anointed woman. Lord have mercy. And listen, the Bible says, and their words seemed unto them as idol tells. How can a woman preach to us about the resurrection? No wonder many have missed out on the day of their visitation because they look at you as an African. They look at you as a woman. They look at you with your skin color. They look at you with your background and they never realize that actually their greatness and their open doors are locked up in what they're despising. Hallelujah. Their what seemed unto them as idol tells them. Peter said, I must go and see for myself. Peter went there, but he never saw Jesus and the Lord never appeared to him either. Oh God. Oh God. Let me say it again. Peter rose and the other disciple called John. They rose as well and reigned. And the other disciple called John outran Peter and went into the sepulchre, hallelujah, or into the tomb. But still, the Lord never appeared unto them. The Lord remained uh, true to his word. Go back to Galilee. There I shall meet with you. The same word of Mary was a somewhat God fulfilled. When Mary said unto them, remain in Galilee, there the Lord shall meet with you. When they obey the word and they come back, that's when the Lord appeared to them. 
There are people who are despising your ministry, despising your word, despising your worship, despising how you do the work of God. Hallelujah. But if you, they could just obey simple, small, divine instructions, they would be so far in life. I mean, women have been despised and they've lost their power to be somebody in society. But I break protocol today by the word of the living God. Women, God is going to use you. You're going to transform America. You're going to transform Africa. You will transform the nations with the power of God, with the power of the resurrection. When the Lord resurrected, there is a reason he appears unto women. First, Mary, the other Mary, and Joanna. Hallelujah. Not to men, but to women, because the Lord was erasing protocol. The Lord was breaking protocol. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. My God, somebody shout hallelujah. Listen. In John 20, verse number 9, we wrote a scripture. And the Bible says, and, uh, and, uh, for, for they knew not the scripture yet, that he must rise again. John 20, verse number 9. For the scripture that he must rise again had not yet been revealed unto them. For as yet they knew not the scripture that he must, not he might, and not he may, but he must. And the Bible says they knew not the scripture. That he must rise again. Yet the Bible says Jesus spoke to them several times. The hour has come. And now I'm going to die. And on the third day I shall rise again. When they were with him at the, at the last supper, he spoke the same message. For the son of man is going to be crucified. Yeah, and hallelujah. And he's going to be betrayed into the hands of sinful men. But on the third day he shall rise again. The Bible says, but they knew not the scripture. This is why also they believe not. Number one, because God sends a woman. Number two, because, because they knew not the scripture. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. They knew not the scripture. Anybody ever read some books of the Bible like Jeremiah? And you're like, Lord, what in the world am I reading? Ezekiel, Lord, what in the world am I reading? You don't understand a single thing about them. They are so difficult to understand. They're like bones. You're chewing bones and the bones are not getting broken down. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, uh, for the scripture that he must rise again was not yet revealed unto them. Their eyes were concealed to a level, uh, to a level of glory and revelational knowledge. Hallelujah. Come with me to Luke 24, verse number 45. The Bible says, and the Lord opened their understanding that they might comprehend scripture. Mm. Luke 24, 45, 45. And the Lord opened their understanding that they might comprehend scripture. Everybody, Luke 24, 45. And the Lord opened. One more time, everybody. No matter how much Mary preached unto them, they could not understand scripture. No matter how much you preach to some people, you wonder, how long have you done ministry? But some people are not becoming born again. Noah preached for 120 years, but was only able to save his wife and his two sons, three sons, right? Three sons and their wives. Amen. Hallelujah. For 120 years, nobody gave their life to God. It seemed as though Noah was preaching to a rock because their eyes were concealed to a level of revelational knowledge and they could not see that. I prayed a long time ago. We were doing a fast as a church a long time ago and, um, and uh, we, were, we decreed 40 days of prayer and fasting and uh, in, the, in the 40 days I was still in school back in the good old days. Amen. Hallelujah. And I would take coffee in the morning and, uh, and uh, sometimes I'll begin my fast at 8 a.m. and uh, maybe 9 a.m. and I'll do 9 to 9 or 8 to 8 or 7 to 7 according to what time I drank the coffee. Hallelujah. And uh, Yes, and I was not consistent. Yet the whole church was doing a six to six fast. On the 22nd day of the fast, the Lord spoke to me clearly and said, I'm canceling your fast. You're going to go back to day one as everybody else, and now you're going to be consistent. 
I'm like, God, what are you doing to me right now? I had to obey the voice of the living God. I went back to day one and I did a six to six until the 40 days were over. On the 40th day, as I was sleeping low and behold, I had a dream and I was standing on a pulpit. And in those days, I used to preach from the New King James Version. So I had my Bible, the New King James Version, and I'm about to start to preach. Suddenly when I opened the scripture, the word turned from New King James into Amplified Version. And I saw the scriptures getting bigger and getting opened and getting expanded. And then the Lord said, I've opened your eyes to understand scripture. From this day, you're going to preach words and revelations that nobody has ever preached about. Hallelujah. When God opens your eyes to understand scripture, hallelujah, you preach revelations that even the doctors of the world and the apostles who have gone in ministry before you shall begin to wonder. Oh, because God opened your eyes. May God open your eyes. Slap somebody. Tell them God will open your eyes. Tell somebody God will open your eyes. In this year, God is going to open your eyes. May God open your eyes to see in the dimensions and in the realms you don't see before. Hallelujah. May God open your eyes. I mean, sometimes you, you, you sit with people and other preachers and you're like, how come I see things they don't see? It is an anointing. It is a grace. How come I have revelations they don't have? It is another level. My God is another level. Just like Pastor Bella is anointed anointed and she's anointed to see in your life and but i'm anointed to see in scripture oh yeah she can see what you did last night how you did it what time you did it where you did it my god rakatakataka Hallelujah. But I will see what Ezekiel wrote, what Jeremiah meant. I will see what the Revelator meant. I will see everything in the scriptures. My God, when God opens your eyes, may God open your eyes in the name of Jesus. This is another level. We just don't wake up and preach the way we preach. There is something behind what we do. There is an anointing behind what we do. Hallelujah. You just don't wake up and you compare yourself with her. She sought God for years, crawled on the floor in the midnight hour. Hallelujah. For years. And in the midnight hour, you're sleeping. Hallelujah. You're having dreams with snakes and monkeys chasing you down the streets while she's shakataka, ragataka, labragabrakataya. Somebody said hallelujah. I can't hear you. Somebody said hallelujah. And I've taken time to study the word. There were times I would spend like five hours a day reading the Bible and writing down in books the revelations. I did this for a space of six months. Six months non-stop. I studied the word daily for five hours daily. And I was praying 12 hours daily for six months. You just don't wake up and you're Dr. David Kunawa. There's something behind what he does. There's something behind what we do. There is an anointing behind what we do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God is inviting you to a higher level. God is inviting you to a deeper level in himself. My God, because of time, let me get out of you. Everybody rise up to your feet. Thank you so much for tuning in. You and your family. We love you and we celebrate you. Unfortunately, I ran out of time. But the message we just spoke about was regarding the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And in the power of the resurrection, we proclaim, we decree, and we declare the resurrection power of Jesus Christ in your home, in your finances, in your marriage, in your academics, in your business, and everything pertaining to your life. The Bible says God will perform and perfect that which concerns you. And I pray that this power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ will reach out unto you. Unfortunately, we're going to have to cut it short because I'm already out of time. But I will love you, we appreciate you, and we'll catch you next time, 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. on this very station right here. We love you. God bless you.